Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to continue to focus on problem solving. However, the big focus is going to be on critiquing the work of others. So when you're critiquing something, somebody's work, you're talking about what did they do well and maybe what could they do better for the next time. So you're really analyzing what someone did with their problem solving. So we are going to have our learning goal of, I can share and critique the solutions for problem for solving word problems. Okay, so remember we're going to use the RDW process. So R is read, D is draw, and W is write. So you are going to read the problem very carefully. Ask yourself, what can I then draw as a model for my problem, and then what equations can I write that go along with the problem, and what sentence can I write, or what can I write in a complete sentence to explain my answer. Okay, so make sure that you're using that today as you are problem solving. So here's our first question. It said Mrs. Walker buys six boxes of pencils, because teachers can never have too many pencils. <laughs> Nine pencils come in each box. She gives each of the 24 students in her class two pencils. How many pencils does she have left? So I want you guys to take a minute and I want you to draw how you would solve this problem. Okay, so pause the video, draw how you would solve this problem. And then we're going to click play and we're going to look at work samples from three other students. And as we're looking through those, we're going to be critiquing those and finding out maybe what they did well, maybe things that they can improve for the next time. But I also want you to be thinking about the relationship of what the strategy that they used to be able to solve the problem and what strategy you used to be able to solve the problem. Because maybe there's things that somebody did really well that you could change in the way that you solved the problem to maybe make it easier or more efficient to be able to solve. So go ahead and pause the video and you are going to draw, okay, read the problem again, draw a model that represents the problem and then write an equation that goes along with each part of the problem. So go ahead and pause the video and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, if you need more time, make sure you click pause. Otherwise, here we go. So here's the first example. Okay, so when I look at this, I wanna talk about what did this student do well? Well, when I look at this, I notice that first the thing that I want to look at is how they drew a picture, right? So they drew a model that looks like the 54, um, which are the number of pencils that they had. As we look at the model, um, I think that it describes the problem. It shows us 54. Um, I like how they wrote it in a complete sentence at the end. And then I like also how they did do a good job with their um, subtraction. So they clearly labeled that. Um, what are things that they could maybe do better to improve their work for next time? Um, I think maybe using a different strategy in this one might be helpful because I think drawing out um, 54 pictures might end up being a little confusing and you might accidentally forget to subtract something as you're like drawing the lines through um, when you're going through and you might end up drawing too many or too few um, of the drawing in the drawing so I think that this strategy might be a little bit less efficient of a strategy and it's definitely going to take you a lot longer to draw all of those um, boxes that they did for their picture to represent 54 so that could get a little confusing Let's look at another example. Oh, so here's a good old number bond. They use a number bond, okay? They labeled their different parts of their problem. That's things that they're doing well. Um, they wrote in a complete sentence. Um, I like how here um, they used a letter to represent the unknown, and they did 24 times two. That could be a little bit tricky. So they came over here and they did 12 or 24 plus 24 because that's the same as multiplying by two is just doubling it. So I thought that was kind of a cool strategy to be able to use. And I do like how they labeled the number bond as the total, total pencils. And the next part is about the pencils that she gave away. So that helps me know that this is a two-step problem as they are solving. The first step is finding the total pencils. And the second step is being able to find out how many pencils that um, she gave away. So I think this was a good example 
of this. I think the only thing maybe to work on for this one is I think it might get a little tricky with the number bond. Um, maybe kind of label the parts of the number bond that those are the boxes. Um, each circle represents a box and then the number nine is the pencils. Maybe just to make it a little bit more clear. But other than that, I think they did a pretty good job explaining with their drawing how they solved this problem. All right, so here's the last example. Let's take a look at this one. I know a lot of you like the tape diagram probably the best. So let's analyze what this student did well. Okay, so what do you guys think they did well? Yeah, I think they organized a nice and neat tape diagram, right? And they labeled the first part of the problem and then the second part. Um, I think that they did a good job with um, their subtraction on the side and then writing the answer in a complete sentence. And then I like how they broke apart the 24 times 2 into 6 times 4 because I think 24 times 2 could be a little bit tricky with that multiplication. And then um, I like how they moved the parentheses to maybe make it a little bit easier as they were going through because four times two is easier than six times four. And then maybe what some suggestions of things that they might wanna do to improve their work from next time is maybe they could, um, instead of doing and moving all the parentheses for 24 times two, um, maybe they could just do like the last problem did where they just did 24 plus 24. That seems like it might be a little bit easier to solve. Um, and I think you can even do some of that in your head since there's no, um, you're not composing another group, like another 10 or anything. It's pretty easy mental math in that one. And then maybe instead of using a subtraction sentence, maybe they just could have counted on from 48 to 54 since they're so close. But those are just some ideas. And if this strategy worked well for the student, then that's great. You want to be making sure that you are using strategies that are the most effective, um, which is good, and the most efficient, which is more quickly, of strategies for you to use to solve each problem. Okay, so make sure you're thinking about that as you are working. And then especially today when you're working on your problem set, make sure that you're talking with your learning guide afterwards to debrief on the lesson and you're explaining what strategy strategies you used and why you chose that particular strategy. So just make sure that you're taking that time to follow up on that with it because that is part of our learning goal today is to be able to share your work. So that's gonna come with a debrief when you're sharing with your learning guide, okay? All right, so you guys rock. You did a great job critiquing solutions for problem or for solving word problems. Um, make sure you guys head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you guys have any questions, please let me know, I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye friends. Bye.